Hello and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Gabriel Prada and here is a quick lecture about ultrasound physics and probe orientation. The word ultrasound refers to sound waves at very high frequencies. So if you need to know one thing about ultrasound physics, that's the meaning of wave frequency and its relationship with image resolution and image penetration. Let's start. Let's look at this wave. Wavelength is the distance between two points of the same phase of the wave namely from one track to the next, as we can see here. Wave frequency is the number of waves that pass a fixed point in a given amount of time. Therefore, wavelength is inversely proportional to wave frequency. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. The standard unit of wave frequency is the hertz, where 1 hertz equals 1 wave passing a fixed point in 1 second. 10 hertz means that 10 waves pass a fixed point in 1 second. The wave we have here shows on its left part a low frequency, as we can see on the scale of hertz. As we move toward the right side, the frequency increases, and so does the hertz. The human ear recognizes sounds between 16 and 20,000 hertz. Below that range, sound waves are called infrasound, and elephants and cats both generate and recognize such sounds, an interesting fact given how different they look. Above 20,000 hertz, we call sounds ultrasonic, and here we find bats and dolphins, which to me are even more different from each other. Ultrasound machines will work with frequencies above 1 million hertz or 1 megahertz. You would think that the big, heavy part of the ultrasound machine is the one that does most of the work, but no, the real MVP here is the probe, or the transducer. The probe almost simultaneously generates and receives ultrasound waves. The ultrasound probe has many small crystals underneath its surface, which, upon receiving an electrical stimulus, vibrate and generate ultrasound waves. The ultrasound waves then travel and, when they meet objects of different densities, just like the sound of your voice comes back as echoes when you sing or just yell at the Grand Canyon, these ultrasound waves also come back towards the probe. These returning ultrasound waves hit the crystals on your probe making them vibrate, and this vibration is then transformed back into electrical stimuli that will travel to the ultrasound machine to be decoded into the image you see on the ultrasound screen. Now let's see how wave frequency determines image resolution and image penetration. Take the guy on the left side, the fastest man on earth, eight-time Olympic gold medalist, the Jamaican Usain Bolt. He's fast, which we will take as indicator of high frequency. His runs are entertaining, that is why you certainly already knew Bolt, but completely ignored the guide on the right side. We will take Bolt being entertaining as indicator of high resolution. Yet, Bolt, however super fast he may be, can only run so far, right? Running that fast, he will soon get tired, this make, and maybe cyanotic, and thus will be unable to go too far. We will take this inability to go far as indicator of low image penetration, meaning that the ultrasound waves cannot reach deep structures in the body. Thus, we have that ultrasound waves at high frequencies will render images with high image resolution but low image penetration, showing mostly superficial structures such as the internal jugular vein. Now let's take the guy on the right side, the long distance runner, four-time Olympic gold medalist, the Somali British Mo Farah. He's not as fast as Usain Bolt, which for us indicates low ultrasound frequency. Watching him run a whole marathon is not as entertaining, which indicates low image resolution. However, he can go much farther than Usain Bolt, which indicates that the ultrasound waves can travel far and reach deep structures. We will take this at deep or higher image penetration. We have then that ultrasound waves with low frequencies will render images with low resolution but high penetration, showing structures deep in the body, such as the heart and the kidneys. I hope this analogy helps you understand the characteristics of the two ultrasound probes we will be referring to. The linear probe on the left and in red, and the phase array probe on the right and in blue. The linear probe works with high frequencies, from 5 to 10 MHz with imaging depth usually of less than 10 cm, but mostly between 2 and 6 cm. Linear probes will show a rectangular image on the screen. The phase array probe, 
also known as the cardiac probe, worked with low frequencies from 1 to 5 MHz with a greater imaging depth of up to 25 cm and will show a triangular image on the screen. Now let's talk about how anatomic structures are located when seen with ultrasound. Imagine the ultrasound beam a thin slice that scans the human body just as CT scans do. The orientation of the probe will determine the scanning plane and accordingly the structure will be superior, inferior, anterior or posterior in the patient's body. Ultrasound machines show structures on the screen as if the probe is sitting on top of the screen. In this image, the structures closer to the anterior parts of the abdomen, the skin, the abdominal muscles, will be located superior on the screen, and those posterior in the abdomen, such as the kidneys or the aorta, will be inferior on the screen. Here we see an image of the long surface in the center of the screen with ribbed shadows on each side. The probe is thus sitting over an intercostal space of the patient's thorax. All probes have an orientation marker or indicator that corresponds to the indicator on the screen, whereby we can determine, based on the orientation of our probe indicator, the anatomic location of the structures seen on the screen. If I tell you that I have the probe over an intercostal space, perpendicular to the chest wall, with the probe indicator toward the 12 o'clock or the patient's head, that is, on a sagittal plane, you can easily deduce which of the two ribs seen on the screen is the superior and which one is the inferior rib. Whatever is closer to the left side is closer toward the heads of the patient, that is, superior, and whatever is closer to the right side of the screen is closer to the patient's feet, that is, inferior. This concept is very important in echocardiography. This is an apical four-chamber view of the heart, and for you to be certain of which cavity is the left ventricle and which the right ventricle, you need to know what is the orientation of the probe indicator, that is, what is it pointing to. In this view, the probe is sitting over the chest area close to the PMI, and the probe indicator is pointing to 3 o'clock position, that is, toward the left side of the patient. Now you know that whatever it is to the right side of the screen corresponds to the left side of the patient, and whatever is close to the left side of the screen corresponds toward the right side of the patient. Thus, the right ventricle will be on the left side and the left ventricle will be on the right side of the screen. Thank you for watching and make sure you check out our website and YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the videos, make sure you like, subscribe and share.